All right, skimmers. I'm Ryan from Skin First Plastering, and in today's video, we are showing you how to dot and dab a wall, basically. So in this video, we're gonna go over four basic steps of dotting and dabbing a wall. There's preparation, cutting, sticking, and leveling. So this video is gonna take you right through the method from start to finish, giving you all the information you need to be able to do this for yourself. And later on in the video, we do have some Spielberg-esque special effects for you to look forward to as well. I promise that. So please remember to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Uh, we do other tutorials and all kinds of different sort of plastering related videos. Please feel free to leave us a comment if you've got any questions, anything that we don't answer in this that you'd like to know, or if there's anything that we do that you think you could do better, or there's a different way of doing it or a better way of doing it, please feel free to let us know. We like a bit of debate about plastering. And if you want to give that like button a press, feel free. Also share the video if you enjoy it. And obviously what you can see right now is not us dotting and dabbing a wall. We are going to be dotting and dabbing the block wall that you can see in front of you right now. Uh, but right now we're just quickly boarding the ceiling and the stud work, which you should always do before you start dotting and dabbing so you don't lose your joists behind the dotted wall. Okay, so there's not much to preparation really when it comes to dotting a wall. Uh, it's quite simple. Make sure you've got a clear working space. Clear any obstacles off the wall, any bits of board, any tools that's in the way. Make sure that the ground is kind of swept out and clear in front of the wall. And then you want to cut your packers. You want about a packer a board. A packer's just a little bit of board that's cut in half to create an inch wedge that you can sit the plasterboard on and it'll just keep them off of the floor. And also remember, if this is a brick wall, then this is where you would apply your PVA. And that's pretty much it for preparation. Cutting, okay. So, I mean, it is pretty much what it sounds like. Cutting the plasterboard to make it fit. Usually a wall will be slightly shorter than 2400, but on this particular wall, it was just over, so I mean, it kind of helps us out in a way, but then it creates a problem down the line. So what we're going to do is we can luckily, it. There's no sockets until right at the end. So starting from left to right, we're using the stud wall to the left that's already boarded as our level because we know that's level. So we can push the board right up to that. And then we just start lifting the full boards, full eight before sheets into place. So we just drop them down onto the packers, one at a time. We keep the packer to the right hand side of the board so it causes it to lean left so it's kind of resting on the board next to it. As you put the boards together just make sure that they line up at the top and bottom. In this case the floor is a little uneven so what we decided to do was just to add an extra layer of packer to the left hand side board which I'm doing there just to make sure that they line up nice. A quick pointer, do be careful of your fingers when you're doing this. Pretty easy to get your fingers trapped between boards and it's not very fun. Okay, so that's the first two boards where we want them. As you can see, Kaya is just now tacking them in place uh, with just a couple of little clout nails. Just pop one nail in each board, it'll just stop it from, I mean, odds of falling outwards are not that likely, but it does happen. So it's worth just tacking them on just to give them a little bit of extra security and hold them in place till we're ready to take them off to stick. Okay, so next board, same thing again. This is pretty much about as easy a wall as you're gonna come up against except for the gap at the top and the socket. But this one Kai can just throw right up. The first two have been leveled. The floor's not as out on this one as it was the first one, so just a case of putting this one straight up. Getting the next packer ready. Here I come. Straight from the van onto the packer. No messing about on this one. And you can see that this board is a little higher 
than the other ones because the floor is gradually sloping up towards this end of the room. So what we decided to do on this one was just take half of the packer out. Just reduce the size by half. Which luckily for us, uh, worked out just perfect. Again, Kai tacked that one in place and chuck down a packer for the last one. We can assume that this is also going to need just one packer rather than the two that we usually use and then we've used three on the first board. Um, so you can see that it's about an inch out across the room. So what I'm doing now is actually just a little trade trick for you. Uh, I'm just using the edge of the plasterboard to score around the socket. Uh, this basically just chalks up the very thin edge of the socket casing so that I can offer up the board and give it a little tap and it'll sort of imprint the shape of the socket on the back of the board and I'll know how to cut it out. Some people do this same thing with water uh, so you can sort of wet the edge of the socket and get the same effect. Some people just measure it and we often just measure it but uh, sometimes it's easier in this particular sort of scenario just to pop the board up and take the marking directly from the socket. So remember that I've just choked up the edge of the socket, we'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, right now I'm just stepping back and taking a look at the boards as they are right now, making sure that we've not made any mistakes, making sure that the, the lines at the top and bottom are nice and even, and there's no gaps between the boards before we made this final cut. This board, uh, they are 1200 across, uh, millimetres that is. So this board is going to be a little bit wide, so this is actually the first cut we actually need to make in the section of cutting uh, one of the only cuts to be honest. So this is a, picture, a video of Kaya doing it on another board on another job but this is basically the process. You create like a margin between the knife and the tape and then you just run it down the board to score a line in it. So you can see me doing it here. We're doing it widthways obviously. So I'm just dragging it down just to create a line with my blade and then sometimes you might just want to run back over the blade just to make sure it's a bit quite a deep groove so that when you snap it, it does snap quite clean. Obviously Kai is earning his money right now. Loving life. So give the board a little bit of a tap on the back. You just want to put your hand on the top and tap the board on the back of where the crease is and it'll just snap. Then you want to run your knife all the way down. You can go either from either side really. And take that piece off. Pop that to one side because you might need it later. That would probably uh, come in handy for where you can see the, the line at the top that we need to fill yet. We could probably use that piece. So I'll pop it to the side. Then the, the edge that we didn't cut, push that up against the board so you've got good edge to good edge. The edge that we did cut, that goes up against the breeze block wall because that will be covered by the board that goes on top of that. Uh, so right now I'm just putting the board up to the wall but I'm going to take it back off. I'm just trying to get the mark from the socket that I mentioned to you a moment ago. So we chalked up the socket casing so I'm just trying to get it lined up on the left hand side with the other boards. Once it's in place I can make sure it's fully lined up. Then what I'm going to do look, is just give it a little bit of a few hammer fists around where the socket is. Quite a few hammer fists in this case. Almost too many to be honest. And take the board off, spin it around. And I don't know if you can see that, but there we have a little marking from the chalk. Okay, so now what you need to do is grab your pad saw. Now the idea with the pad saw is just to cut around the chalk line that you've made on the board. If you're cutting it from the back like I am, you want to be careful not to cut on the forward stroke so much and more cut on the back stroke just so you don't uh, damage the front of the board. 
you don't want to push the socket out through the good side of the board. Um, here you can see a little clip uh, of cutting out close up. This is not uh, this socket obviously. What you're looking at right now is when we cut out a, on a previous date, this is actually Kaya cutting this out, but it's the uh, just a little notch that we cut out for uh, a light switch, but, but it's the same principle. So basically you just want to cut that out There we go. So socket cut out, turn the board back around, and the most important part is make sure it fits. So again, edge it up, push it up to the existing plasterboard. Make sure it's all nice and tight all the way down. And then just push it around the socket. If there's any of it that won't slide straight back, then you can use a knife just to cut the uh, cut it out just to widen where the socket is. It doesn't have to be perfect, you do get a little bit of wiggle room with sockets. The plates are a little bit bigger than the casings. So just pop your little pin in there and that's the bulk of the wall cut. Oh, ignore that, health and safety hazard. So the next thing you want to do is give it a quick tidy up. It's important to keep on top of the cleaning when you're doing this sort of thing just because otherwise it'll start to build up. You end up with loads of little strips and offcuts everywhere. So we give it a little bit of sweep up. As you can see we've got a few of the bags in as well, uh, ready for mixing. So now we're nice and clean. We have Kaya here just cutting the last of those two little strips. I think two and a half altogether to, uh, to do this, but he's just cutting some strips out of that uh, piece there. We're actually just going to check to make sure that they fit, and once we know that they fit, then we'll probably just put them to one side until the rest of the board's stuck and level. So that's the little pieces cut. Obviously, be careful when handling these; they are very flimsy, as you can see there. Uh, that was the little off cut that we don't need anymore. So. He's got the strips and he's just guiding it up there just to make sure it fits. Okay, so this is the fun bit. So now we're taking the clout nails out that we're pinning up the boards and we're just going to put the boards to one side in order from last board to go on all the way back to first board uh, and then we'll put them on in the, the same order that we put them on while we was cutting them when we're actually sticking them. As Kai's taking them off, notice he's got a little bit of chalk in his hand, he's drawing a line down the wall uh, along the side of the board and as he takes these off you'll see uh, he's done that for a reason, it's just to mark out where the boards are so when we're putting the dots on he knows exactly where to put the dots to make sure that all the boards are fully supported. The last thing you want is a corner of a board or an edge of a board that's got nothing behind it. You need to have something there for the board to rest on. And so with this final board, that's all the boards cut and now removed and prepared for sticking. Get your business fanned with Biz Plus. We do everything from website and graphic design to marketing services, including search engine optimization, Google, and Facebook ads. We're a five-star rated company featured as excellent on Trustpilot with over 50 happy customers. Click the link below to book in a free call to see if we would be a good fit for you. Biz Plus, putting the plus in your business.
Okay, so we're on to sticking. So obviously, Kai is just mixing up the uh, board adhesive right now. You want to mix it so it's quite firm. It doesn't want to be too uh, firm, obviously, but you'll see roughly in a moment how we mix it. Uh, we like to mix it so it's quite stiff, a lot stiffer than you would mix skim. Uh, obviously, it still needs to be cer a certain degree of wet wetness to it in order to actually be sticky. Kai's just wet all his tools off, making sure that they're nice and nice and lubricated. It's just running a bit of board adhesive over his tools, just to make sure there's not too much water on there so that it slide, doesn't slide off. And that's it, it's got a little mounting on there. See, it's quite firm, it's holding its shape. A bit more mashed potato with them, we usually, I suppose that's a terrible analogy. You might have your mashed potatoes super, super runny, I don't know. Just pay attention to where he's putting the, the actual dots and dabs. He's basically just uh, lining the wall with them. So he's going to put them at certain intervals throughout the board, especially focusing on the skirting line and the top of board and edge of the boards, uh, but with a few dotted about in between as well. Now one thing to remember is that everyone has a different technique for doing this. We know that on a lot of sites he'll like you to do something called solid uh, solid dabbing which is where you basically frame the wall he build a frame all the way around the wall with a solid line of dab and then you do this kind of thing in the middle as well but we we do think that's a bit of overkill to be honest we don't really do it I mean this is this is just a, one of it's one of our private jobs we do dotting and dabbing like this all the time I've done this for about 12 12 years and I've never had a wall come off so I think we're putting plenty on there and we also put quite because it's quite stiff we put quite uh, thick dots on so as you'll see in a moment when you actually press the board back they spread out behind the board uh, I'll show you that in a moment you will speed him up a bit you've seen it in slow now so he's, he's basically just pottering about lining the uh, the bottoms up don't know what I'm doing there I'll cut something off it looks like. Okay, so, so Kai's just making sure that he's got all the dots evenly spaced out. Regular intervals. And here is the first bit of sticking. So Kai is actually uh, resting the leading the board up to the left like we did before. But what he's doing is he's, he's offering it up to the wall, but he's not pressing it on. He's just basically touching the dots with it. So he's not really putting any pressure on that. He's not spreading them out. We do that in a moment. So he's just, just basically lightly touching them onto the dots just so it grips hold of them. As you can see, he's doing one after the other, making sure we put them in the exact same positions they were in before when we uh, first cut them. And that brings us on to our fourth and final step, probably the most important one, the leveling. So this one's pretty self-explanatory to be fair. Big long level, as long as you can get. And you're basically just making sure first vertically that the board is level all the way along. So just making sure that it's nice and flat. So it's touching the, uh, the, the level all the way along. But then that it's also using the bubble to make sure that it is horizontal, uh, vertically level. Okay, so then we're just, once the first one's level, we're running through, going left to right across the other boards, then sort of taking that, that level all the way through. So you're just giving the boards a bit of a tap, just banging it into place, and you're looking along it. And then checking back, making sure that the original uh, level has not been lost have been knocking in the others. If it has changed a little bit, you just want to use the level to use a bit of force as well just to bang it into position. And then you just repeat that process all the way down, all the way down your wall. If you can want, you can use a set square on the uh, on the corners up against the stud wall 
Uh, in this case, we've got the boards at the top on the ceiling to, to sort of use as a bit of a guide, which we can eye that up there to make sure it's square. Guys, just filling in the tops now, just so that when we the strips in, it's all got something behind it, especially on the edges, making sure that it's not going to fold in or be flapping once we've stuck it. So with the wall all filled out, that is pretty much the end of this tutorial. You can now see that the wall is a perfectly flat uh, rectangular wall. But before you go, I do just want to explain a few, couple of things and I would like to show you something which I think is pretty cool. So using the power of uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, I, I imagine, is the only thing it's really using the power of. but. We are about to make this wall go invisible, so if you just stare at that wall, you should start to see the dots coming through. Now, you can see where the dots are positioned. Um, I would just like to point out that when the wall is pressed back, they wouldn't look like this if they would actually spread out and be much wider. Uh, and so they'd cover a much larger area behind the board once the boards are pressed into position. Uh, so this is not a true representation of what it looks like behind the board. As you can see that orange circle there, it covers a much wider area. So if you imagine all of those spread out, you could imagine that most of those dots would uh, touch around the edges and the ones in the middle would be quite close to touching and would cover quite a large area. And so that's basically what happens behind a plasterboard when you're dotting and dabbing. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you've made it this far, you must be pretty bored, but thank you, we appreciate it. Please remember to like and subscribe and leave your comments and all that. We really do enjoy getting uh, getting the comments from you you people, uh, especially the ones that tell us how we're doing everything wrong. We really enjoy those, so keep those coming in. So yeah, enjoy this little montage of us finishing this job, and we will see you on the next video.